Since we've started this season with the first couple episodes on planning, let's stick to that theme. As a matter of fact, today let's talk about planning to not create, and I hate even using this term, dough factories. I hate using the term because frankly I think there's so much misinformation regarding dough factories it's not even funny. Here's the idea. The idea is that if you go ahead and do anything but put in a fall candy kill plot for mature bucks, what you do, in other words, if you put in clover, if you put in alfalfa, if you put in soybeans for that matter, virtually anything but these fall candy crops, if we offer off-season nutrition, the idea is that you pull every doe in the area onto your ground and they in turn drive the bucks away. The bucks don't want to be around these does, so they go ahead and take off for parts unknown and end up relocating to all the neighbors. So now we're left with is does and young bucks. Here's the problem. In my experience, and I'm going to make myself look like a real jerk here for a sec, and I apologize for that. But I think you'll understand why when I'm done. I have managed deer dirt for almost 30 years. Um, <clears throat> I have went ahead and done all sorts of on-site consultations, one-day jobs where you show up, you do your thing, and you leave. And I also offered for a quarter of the cost aerial evaluations where the clients gave me all sorts of information and then I went ahead and utilized topo maps and photos to generate a plan for them. At the same time that that's been going on, for nearly 30 years now, I have managed an average of hands-on management work I've done. Forget about the plans, forget about the one-day trips, the multi-year management plans. I am well over 30,000 acres of dirt that I've managed. In my experience, in each and every one of those situations, ranging from managing an 80 acre parcel to the largest I've ever managed has been 5,000. Okay. Each and every one of them I've offered year-round nutrition. Yes, offering year-round nutrition goes ahead and sucks a lot of does, fawns, and young bucks in. When you can go ahead and make your property offer the best nutrition, the best cover, the best feeling of safety, water, breeding opportunities, you offer them what they want and need better than they can get in the surrounding areas. And guess what? Deer go like that. That's natural. They converge. Here's the myth, though. The myth is not that mature bucks do not want to be around does, fawns, and young bucks. What it really ultimately boils down to is they don't want them crashing their bedrooms. So what you do, the way most people ruin their hunting ground is they make a bunch of improvements where mature bucks naturally are slash or want to bed. They make those improvements around those areas so now the does and fawns go like this and young bucks. So rather than Mr. Big having this area to himself, now now it's a whirling derby of activity. Young does, fawns, all running around there like crazy. That is what Mr. Big does not want. Bedding is primo for mature bucks. I can honestly say that for most of the year, I don't believe there's much that's more important to Mr. Big than bedding security. Okay. Does, fawns, young bucks running around his bedroom trashes that bedding security because now every time he hears a stick, every time he hears rumples, he's got to check it out. That makes for very, I'm, a lot of this is guesswork, but it sure seems to appear that it makes for a very uncomfortable bedding scenarios for Mr. Big. If you want to avoid creating these dough factories, what you do is you identify first where Mr. Big beds, and then you put no doe drawing improvements within 150 yards, unless there's some wildly bizarre circumstances, within 150 yards of that bedding. What you do instead, does, fawns, and young bucks don't place anywhere near the level of importance on bedding security that Mr. Big does. Mr. I'm not saying it's not important to doe swans and young bucks, it is, but nowhere near as important it is for Mr. Big. 
Okay, okay. We stack those does, fawns, and young bucks around the food. We leave those back areas alone for Mr. Big. And you know what? You can have all sorts of deer running around your ground without creating that dreaded doe factory that drives all the mature bucks off your ground. Every one of those 30,000 acres I've managed, when I got done with them, they all drew more deer than they did before. And guess what's the dirty little secret? They all had more mature bucks living on them after I was done than they ever did before as well. It's not that you can't have a bunch of does and mature bucks at the same time. It's that you have to lay it out so you don't trash Mr. Big's man cave. There's an awful lot, awful lot of misinformation surrounding creating doe factories. The idea is that if you offer year-round nutrition, you're going to suck too many does, fawns, and young bucks in, and they're going to drive the mature bucks away. That is not accurate. What is accurate is when you make your improvements so that you are drawing a bunch of does, fawns and young bucks specifically to Mr. Big's bedding area. That is how you drive Mr. Big. Well, that's one of the ways you drive Mr. Big off your ground. The other way is you trash his bedding area by hunting it a bunch and do it through human pressure. But you can most definitely offer year-round nutrition for whitetails without creating a doe factory as long as you factor Mr. Big's bedding and what he wants into your equation when laying out these improvements. You do that, you can have, oftentimes, have it all. That said, if you do not have Mr. Big bedding on you to begin with, if your neighbors have prime Mr. Big bedding and you don't, I'll tell you what, you're better off focusing on creating a buck trap nine times out of 10 because getting him off of prime bedding and getting him to bed in, even after your improvements, less prime bedding for what he's looking for, that's a big ask.